Hiya, this video is called Getting More Out of Top. And uh, I'm going to show you in this video how to get Top to show you some interesting information that it doesn't show you by default. So what we're looking at here is um, we're looking at a box that runs MySQL. And as you can see, this is just the standard Top view. This is what you get if you don't have a .toprc file configured the way you like it, you know, with all of your favorite options to Top. So this is pretty much what you get by default. Top is sorting on the percent CPU column. So the things that are consuming CPU are going to be up at the top, and there you see MySQLD at the top. And it might be a little confusing for you to see more than 100% CPU usage. That's because this is a multi-core box, and MySQLD has a lot of threads running inside of it. Each query gets its own thread, and there's a couple dedicated threads, a handful of dedicated threads, I should say, that uh, do various things inside MySQL. So the first thing I like to do when I get um, a vanilla top install like this is I like to hit the Z key and that gives me color. I like color. I also hit the capital H key which shows me all of the threads running around inside each process. So when I hit capital H it says show threads on and now you can see there's a bunch more MySQLD processes running and a bunch more Java processes running that you can see. I should say threads rather than processes. Now that you have all of this information overload here, you have all of these things, what I like to do is hit the I key. Now this just shows me stuff that is in the run queue or is waiting on disk IO. So you can see right now we've got a load average, and you can see that at the top here, load average is about 8, 8.3, and what that basically means is that there are 8 processes either in the run queue, um, consuming CPU, or they're in a state D, in which case they'd be highlighted in red, which is blocked on disk IO. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set the delay from 3 seconds to just some big number. So this means that I have to refresh top manually now. So I can hit the return key. And every time I hit the return key, it refreshes. I think the space key also works. And you can see that processes or threads blocked on disk IO are highlighted in red. And that's one of the nice things about hitting Z. So that color highlighting can help you figure out if uh, everything is blocked on disk IO or if, you know, your load average is based on stuff that's actually running and taking CPU time. The next thing I want to do is I want to see what's really going on inside all of the CPUs. So if you see right here on, on the CPU line, this is kind of an aggregate of what all of my CPUs are doing. 12.9% user. That's just user-level, non-privileged code. 3.7% SY, that's sys. 3.7% of our cores are inside the kernel, running around. 0.0% NI. That is code that has been niced. 88% idle. 80.8% idle. Um, that means we have a lot of extra CPU capacity. 0.4% weight. That is your I.O. weight number telling you that 0.4% of the time we are waiting blocked on disk I.O. 0.4% H.I. That is percentage of our di CPU capacity that is sitting, um, or excuse me, that is come from hardware interrupts. So things like your Ethernet controller, uh, disk I.O., that kind of thing. 1.8% uh, SI, now that is software interrupts, and breaking out the difference between hardware and software interrupts is really not all that useful, because hardware interrupts often create software interrupts, and some things like your Ethernet card, they'll use a mix of both hardware interrupts and software interrupts, but it's predominantly software interrupts. So you can think of hardware interrupts and software interrupts as basically being the same thing. The distinction is really not that useful to me. 
And then very last, we have 0.0% ST, that is percent steel. This is a physical piece of hardware, so it's not virtualized. But if it were, and we were seeing other CPU, or I guess I should say, other virtualized machines on the same physical hardware, if they were stealing CPU cycles from us, we'd see it in percent steel. A very, very high percent steel indicates that you're on an overloaded piece of virtual hardware. Excuse me, piece of physical hardware, and you want to get off that. All right, so this is all pretty cool, but we, we're seeing CPU information in aggregate, and it's kind of more interesting to me to see all the CPUs at once. So I like to hit the one key, which shows me the SMP view. And oh my god, our screen just changed. So now we see CPU 0 all the way through CPU 23. This is a 24 core box. And we have all of these numbers broken out on a per CPU basis. Right away, this jumps out at me here. As you can see, CPU 0 is doing a bit more work than the rest of the CPUs in terms of handling hardware and software interrupts. These two here. Some software interrupts here. Uh, there are there's still some software interrupts that are handled happening on other CPUs, but it's predominantly on CPU zero. CPU zero is handling the lion's share. I'd say all of the hardware interrupts. This to me says that there's something misconfigured with this machine. There's a user land daemon called IRQ Balance that will supposedly spread out the load of hardware and software interrupts across all of your CPUs, but that's clearly not happening here. So it's possible that as this machine gets more and more overloaded, CPU zero will become a bottleneck. When we're talking about CPUs, it's sometimes useful to see which process is running on which CPU core, and that's kind of fun. So I like to hit lowercase f, and this lets you specify um, some other fields that you might want to see in top. So I like to hit J, which gives you the last used CPU. And so now we have this P column right here, which shows the CPU that this process runs on, or is running on. And it's sometimes it's interesting or useful for me. I like to sort on the CPU column, so I hit capital F. If I hit J here, I change the sorting order for no, we're no longer s sorting on percent CPU, but instead we're now sorting on last used CPU. So now all the CPUs are in order with the highest CPU number at the top and the lowest number CPU at the bottom. So this is interesting. Here's a we have a lot going on right now. So if we look at something that's doing a lot of CPU usage. All these threads are on various CPUs, and some of them are doing some CPU usage, like this right here, this this version of MySQL, or this MySQL thread, is doing 12.8% CPU usage, So, and it is on CPU Core 1. CPU Core 1 is only 80% idle, so that's sort of interesting. Another thing you can do is hit lowercase c if you want to see the full command line of what you're looking at in top. So now we can see, this is not super useful to me, because MySQL has a huge command line. So I'm just going to turn that back off by hitting lowercase c again. So there you go, that's how to get some useful information out of top. So I discussed before there was a problem where, and we've seen this, where CPU 0 is getting most of the software and hardware interrupts. So I'm going to go take a look at this some, at some further detail outside of top. So I'm going to look for IRQ balance. And there is none, which doesn't surprise me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look and see what's happening interrupt-wise on this machine. And to do this, I'm going to have to make my screen very small. So bear with me. I'm going to cat proc interrupts. 
and this is almost small enough. Do you have a little bit of wrap here? There we go. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but here in the CPU zero column, we're getting just a ton of interrupts for the timer, a lot of interrupts for the Ethernet card. That's ETH is one, ETH zero. So I think this pretty much explains, and we're not seeing any interrupts on the rest of the cores, and I think this explains why we were seeing that extended, uh, or I guess I should say, more than we'd want to see in hardware and software interrupts on CPU zero. One interesting thing you can do is, I don't know if you guys know about the watch command, but you can say watch, and um, I like dash D, which shows you deltas. So every two seconds this is going to update. It's going to show us deltas or diffs of what's changing. Uh, you can see that ETH0 is really doing a fair amount of work here. You know, we see single digit or double digit changes in the interrupt counts for ETH1. And uh, I guess quite a lot of timer interrupts too. ETH0 here is doing a lot of the work where ETH1 is really not generating a lot of interrupts, but ETH0 is definitely um, hitting us kind of hard. And I think that's that where we're seeing those elevated values on ETH0, or excuse me, CPU0. All right, so this has been how to get more out of top. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you guys could see when I went to super small font. Thanks for watching.